I hear things all the time that uh, that are off um, about my philosophy. Uh, see, the truth is, I have no philosophy. I don't believe in philosophy. I mean, that's dogma. The only thing I try to do is uh, encourage two things. Number one, the uncovering of the two forces of this universe that are perpetual, love and intelligence. And I try to promote the thing that opens you up to understanding love and exercises intelligence. When I say exercises it, I I've been working on some things that I worked on years and years ago that I actually stopped working on because people were trying to steal it. <laughs> okay. And I was thinking about my doctors and stuff and how much more effective they would be had they a better idea or broader idea of the way the universe worked. Um, uh, last time I was in there, um, I think my cardiologist had been trying to convince me to get a pacemaker. And he'd say, okay, you know, you need to get this pacemaker. And I'd say, okay, and I'd never go. <laughs> and he said, you made the right call. Okay, well, there's a reason I made the right call. Not just stubbornness, but there's a reason. Now, my whole point in this is that encouraging thought outside of the box the box being the way science is looked at, the way reality is looked at, the way our lives are looked at. We try and live the life from outside in. Even the stuff that happens inside of us, our emotional stuff, is stuff that we have accepted from the outside in. We've accepted things from our parents when we were little about the nature of reality. Uh, about how you should do and what you should do. So we accepted that from outside in. It doesn't really work. It doesn't have the broad scope enough to really work. That's why there's so much confusion. You cannot take another person's idea and make it happen. You can't do it. Because you have to understand the idea from the inside out from the inside out. Once you understand that, you understand all the implications of that, whatever it is that you are understanding. One of the things I try to do is to present you with ideas. Not necessarily that you would accept that idea or remember something I've said. Don't take my word for it. Do this and understand for yourself, which means if you do certain things, you will have certain experiences and you will understand from the inside out. That way, no one has to tell you what the next step is. I have people come to me all the time and say, Ananda, what decision should I make? How the hell should I know? <laughs> I'm making decisions for me. <laughs> you have to make decisions for yourself. Okay? That is the promotion of the use of intelligence. Wisdom comes from doing things and making mistakes. You learn from that. That's why we have youth. That's why there's an old story of an old bull and a young bull standing on a hill looking down at a bunch of cows. Young bull says, come on, old man, let's run down here and make love to one of these cows. And the old bull says, son, let's walk down there and make love to all of them. One <laughs> is wisdom, experience. What I want to expend all my energy in running. There's something more pleasurable for me to do it. I could do it a lot longer if I don't expend the energy running. <laughs> you follow my point? I made a statement to you. All things come from the inside out. If you will look at things. The energy burst happens within it to the outside. That is set up by the law, the law of the Big Bang. The Big Bang set the law for this entire 
physical universe and universes. What happens is everything was in one spot, right? But there's movement in that spot and everything is there and there's enough energy that finally comes together to overcome the gravity that holds it together because of the movement. Bam! From the inside out. Now what has happened is that it's become so intense in there, it has to find a place to be. It has to create a place. It creates space. It is the first form of light. Everything in the universe is light. Everything. So what happens from this moment, from that center, it is so hot, you cannot even call it a thing. You can't call it anything. Now, as it moves and expands space, it cools. It cools to become the subatomic particles that form the, like, the elements, helium, uh, hydrogen, I'm sorry. As it cools, further and further away as it cools. So what you're looking at is a timeline. However, you know I've said there's no such thing as time. There's only space. There's, time is a, an account of movement through space. All right? Now, so everything cools. It comes down. You get the basic element, hydrogen. Hydrogen comes together. Boom, you get a sun. You get all this energy and everything in there and more electrons and stuff are added to the shells. And then you get uh, helium and uh, so on and so forth. It's not really a lesson in physics or whatever that is, or chemistry or whatever that is. I've always been confused between chemistry and physics. They always seem like the same thing to me. <laughs> I don't know. But then I'm just a guy. So, now, everything came from a central point. Within, not outside of. That set the law. Now you look at everything else. Look at the earth. If you cut down through the, th through the earth, everything is happening in the center. You have this atomic reaction going on in the center. Light is created. Energy is created. The next level up, gases, kind of liquid stuff, then on out to the crust. Everything exists like that. Okay, From the inside out. That is the law. Living by that law is what is important, not living from the outside in. Because everybody wants you to play according to their game. Okay? You can't. Because you don't understand their game. You can only understand your game. One of my, the biggest uh, uh, problems that I had, I didn't grow up with other people. I mean, I grew up with one. I'd go, to, go into town on Saturday and I'd see a lot of them, but I didn't have interactions with them. So when I went to school, it's like these people had a book that I didn't have. They were doing stuff that I didn't understand. So I tried to fit. It really didn't work. It really didn't work. Okay? My trying to fit. My circumstance, because I grew up, it's just my grandmother and I, and not exactly in the midst of town. Okay. The other thing is that I got a couple of double promotions, they called them. So I was in a group of people who were two years older than I was. And they were talking about things and doing things. I was like, what? Oh, yeah, yeah. I understand. No, I didn't. 
So I never fit. One of the things I learned, no one fits. <laughs> no one fits. Okay, we can try. No, what you have to do, you will fit and I will fit when we follow the law inside. Now, understand me, I'm not talking about the bullshit here. I'm talking something deeper. I'm talking the fire deeper. Now, intelligence enters the universe as light. Everything penetrates this universe and is this universe as light. That was my point of the Now, your idea of light may be this. That's only one kind of light. X-rays are light. Um, you name it, it's light. You may not be able to perceive it with your eyes. If you just feel heat, heat is light. All is light. Intelligence is light at a vibrational frequency that you cannot see with your eye. Now you have shorter waves of light that are intelligence. You have shorter waves of light that cannot be seen with the eye or experienced with the hand, but are experienced as intuition and feeling. You feel these things. You can't see them. All right? But it's all light. Now, why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this because the idea is to get you to begin to go, hmm, what the hell does that mean? How does this happen? So what we're doing is exercising thought, or promoting the idea of thought, promoting the idea to see the world differently than the assumption that it is the byproduct that you see, stimulating the activity of intelligence. I've said doubt, the word devil means doubt or double to double think, to try and do two things simultaneously, try to hold two thoughts simultaneously. Divided thought. That's why I'm having problems being successful at whatever I'm doing. Why I'm never successful at what I'm doing. Oh, I'm not focused. Okay. Well, there's a time to try many things, but when you try different things, you try one thing at a time. When you're present with that thing, you're present with that thing. The next moment, you're going to try something else, you're present with this thing. Now, you may go back over here, but you're present here, so it's one thing at a time. It doesn't say that mean that you can't experience many things in life. You can. I did it all my life. I had to check out everything, everything. I thought that was the way you were supposed to be. So you end up with a lot of knowledge. You end up with a lot of wisdom. And I think we should encourage children to be this way. But with the direction of finding what they want to do and pursuing it. Because it's from the inside out from the inside out. One of the problems that we have with our relationships, whatever that relationship is, whether that's with parents or with lovers or with friends or with whatever, is we don't respect each other's right to live from the inside out, to try what they want to try and to be okay with that. This is where love comes in, real love. 
Love can be there, but if it's filtered through fear and doubt and insecurity, then I want you to play the game with me. I want you to play my game. Because it's not my love that's speaking, it's my insecurity that's speaking. You follow what I'm saying? So, the idea of this is to provoke the idea of, wait a minute. Huh, what's going on here? Think. Rather than to think about all the stuff that's going on, wait a minute. This whole thing is a different vibrational frequency of light? What does that mean? Huh. Now I've got time to ponder the truth and begin to live with the truth. Huh. As I live with the truth, I experience something that is a reality, that is a truth. Peace is truly a place. <laughs> but it is a place within, not without. Within. It's a quality, peace. Clarity is a quality. It's there. You feel it. That's why I said certain things who have a shorter vibrational frequency, a shorter wave frequency, are felt. You see, we don't feel these things as long as we are listening to the longer vibrational frequencies. The thought, even though the thought vibrational frequency may be like this in comparison to uh, iron, which is like this, but in comparison to what is felt in the vibrational frequency, in comparison to that, thought is like Mount Everest. Okay? The shorter frequencies are felt. There is a quality called peace. There is a quality called clarity. You can feel it as sure as you can put your hand on your nose and feel your nose actually. You can feel it better than that because you never touch your nose anyway. <laughs> All I'm saying is I'm introducing ideas to encourage thought. Encouraging thought is a process. But now, here's a certain thing that has to go along with that. One must want to know. You have to want to know. You can't just do it because, you know, Ananda said it's a good idea. You have to do it because you want to understand. You want certain problems solved. And you want those problems solved. Things are done and things come about all the time to cause you to stop looking in a direction and look in this direction. Relationships end. To cause you to look this way, not that way. To look this way. It's not saying, what's wrong with me? It's saying, what's going on? It's a difference. It's a difference in the question. What's happening here? Why is this happening? Another clue that you've been given is, you create your reality by your thoughts huh. what does that mean question in here see I'm not saying there's something wrong with me I'm saying maybe I should let me check out what is the mechanism how does this work how does this happen and it is a question that only each individual can solve People can solve it, and then they can do what I'm doing to say, it can be done. 
but here are the things here are the the things that have to be exhibited in order for it to be done that's all that's all we trust science yeah. <laughs> we do we trust it it's concrete really is it I talked about my doctors. Um, very smart men. Very smart in certain ways. I'm off of much of the medication I was on, no thanks to them. Look at the difference in me now and the difference a few years ago when they were saying, you're going to be dead by the first of the year. <laughs> could be I could be dead tomorrow too I could walk out there and get hit by a car but I'm more damn sure make sure I look both ways when I go out <laughs> okay <laughs> things we need to understand and let's just talk about that everything exists its old existence is based in light you have it at center heat, where you eat food, you break it down, goes into the cells, it's broken down, heat is released, we call it energy in the cell, which moves out. The cell has a boundary, we can call it a crust. Well, everything looks that way. Your spinal cord looks that way, your cells look that way, the earth looks that way, everything looks that way. Because of this shape, there is a sound that in the East they call the name of God that represents that. That sound is Om. It is said to be the name of God, but it is a representation of the shape. Everything is a representation in that sense. Now, that fire in the center of that thing is life itself. Everything is released through that fire. Intelligence is released through that fire. The food you eat. If it's been dead for a while and you eat it, you're not eating life. Eating stuff has a some kind of stuff going on. You know, uh, I'm not saying you should eat, you should be meat eater, steak eater, whatever. All I'm saying is, if you kill a cow last week, he did, <laughs> okay? <laughs> it was last week by the time he gets to your lips. <laughs> He's good and dead, okay? Smell it. I'm not, I'm just saying. <laughs> if you if you get a fresh vegetable, it's alive. It has that life in it. So what you're eating is life. What you're putting into your system is life itself because it's fresh. Now, if you're going to run out there and jump down and bite the cow's throat out and sit there and eat it like a lion, way to go. <laughs> you're eating life. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. When you cook it, and you overcook it, you kill the life in it. So, what you're putting in is something that's kind of alive and stuff like that. So, what your body does is takes that and try to make what it's supposed to make out of it. And the result of that, we call it cancer. Because we're not putting life in. We're putting death in, all right? So just think about that for a moment. I'm, I'm not trying to convince you of anything, all right? Eat what you want, I don't care. <laughs> it's up to you. All I'm saying is if you put life in, you get life out. Breakfast, for me, 
is berries. Pick a bunch of blueberries, blackberries, strawberries, raspberries, uh, some other kind of berry. Take some pomegranate juice and some acai juice, some raw vegetable protein. Throw it in the blender with some cinnamon. Blend it up. Don't have to taste good. Drink it down. Breakfast. Ah, breakfast of champions. Some greens, some collards, some spinach, some whatever, blah, blah, blah. All that together. Throw it in there. Put it in the blender. Liquefy it. Drink it down. I'm good. My mind says to me, you hate vegetables. I go, yeah, I do. That's why I do it like this. I don't have to taste it. <laughs> I've got what I need. I'm not hungry. I don't have to taste it. Great. This says something. My intelligence says life to life. What you find happening is things changing because you're putting live things in. That's all I'm saying. All I'm saying is think. I don't, I don't have a philosophy. All I'm saying is think about things. Think about what does this mean? How does this work? Huh. I said to you, there are, if we look at the chain of life, the first in the chain, the lowest chain, the longest vibration exists in the red spectrum, minerals, okay? You have seven keys or seven notes, which is one octave. You have do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, mineral. The next level is animal. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti. The next level is man. So what you have is these octaves. If you look at, uh, I forget what they are now, the periodic table. Um, I don't remember all my chemistry right now, but there's uh, uh, chemistry of octaves. For instance, if you have a chemical here and that chemical has a bad smell, bad taste, that would be dope. And the next one in that family, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, wouldn't have that. But the next one, do, in the next family would have similar characteristics. All right? So all the do's line up, all the c's line up, all the a's line up. So what you have, if you look at a piano, you have seven octaves, right? You have seven octaves in the development of, of humanity. Minerals, plants, animals, man, genius, prophet, God, man. Now these are just terms that identify the different vibrational frequencies of reception. When I say man, genius, prophet, God, man. It's just a different vibrational frequency of thought that you are able to receive. All is able to receive all of these vibrational frequencies. What we have to do is receive them. What we have to do is pay attention to them. They are what you really are. Okay? So, everything exists like that in those sevens. I've told you before, and I've, I've said this as a point of beginning to ask a question. I've said the number of life is seven. Everything in life, okay, is six plus one. Six sides plus what is contained within. Everything, 
top, bottom, front, back, left, right, and what is contained within. So the number of life is seven. You got to say, well, what does that mean? Let me look at the sevens. Let me look at that. Let me see. Wow. So it's not so much what that means. It is that I'm loosening the bounds of what I think I know. And it's the bounds of what I think I know that keep me a prisoner. So I become more fluid, more flexible, more able to receive more and more information, more readily available, more information is available to me because I'm more willing to say, oh, I'm more willing to pay attention. I'm more willing to listen to the person next to me and hear, wait a minute, what is it you say? Oh, I hear you. Okay. I'm listening to you. Now what we do, and I've said this over and over again, you can't <sighs> listen and talk at the same time. You can talk and hear at the same time, but you can't listen because listening implies understanding to what you, what you hear. Okay? But if I'm talking, I'm voicing what I want to say without hearing what you want to say. Therefore, there's a problem. Conversation is 100%, 100%. We'll say 50%, 50%. Nonsense. 100%, 100%. When I am speaking, I must say exactly what I mean. 100%. On the other end of that, I must listen 100%. I'm listening to what you have to say, therefore what I have to say is meaningless because I am listening. Now, when I respond after I have heard what you said, it is your job to listen 100% and my job to say 100% what I mean. In that way, we can resolve issues. Let's look at something. An issue right now. We talk about uh, President Obama and uh, Mitt Romney. I don't care who the man is. Look at a fact. What is the philosophy of the group? We had a guy in the office that we loved. And evidently, he loved a lot of women, too. Bill Clinton. When Bill Clinton was in office, the guidance of that party, the country was in the black. In the black meaning we had money. We had people had jobs. Because of the philosophy of the party, not necessarily the guy. When the other group came in, who see it from another perspective, who say the money should dribble down from the top rather than into the middle class and down and up from there, we went into the red. That surplus we had is gone. Now, what does that say? That says that one philosophy leads to this and one philosophy leads to that. I don't care who the guy is. What I care about is the philosophy. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not trying to convince you to vote. I'm saying, let's, you have to cut the fat off and look at the facts of anything. Doesn't matter. Like Bill Clinton says, I brought something real important to the White House. Arithmetic. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's real simple, arithmetic, okay? Point being, what is the issue? Not all the fuzz around the issue. What is the issue? From the point of clarity, we zero in on the issues, whether that is in a relationship or whatever the 
across the board idea of relationships is, whether that is in science, whether that is in uh, whatever. What is the issue separate and apart from my emotional attachment? What's the issue? What's the issue? I want you to understand what the point is. I want, I'm using an example of what the point is. I'm not one who goes out looking for people. Mm -mm. That doesn't work. I see it all the time. Large groups of people, if you forgive my, or not, large groups of people being stupid. Large groups of people believe in stuff that makes absolutely no sense. Makes absolutely no sense at all. I think in the movie uh, Matrix, one of those Matrix movies, I forget which one. There was a, a group of people called the Mary Vinci, something like that, an Italian name. And someone said, who were they? I said, they are supposedly descendants of the daughter of Mary Magdala and Jesus. That can't be. Well, why not? I guess Jesus was a man, therefore he had a penis. And Mary was a woman, therefore she had a vagina. And they are people. I'm not saying it is. I'm saying, why would you make the assumption that that's not true? The evidence, as far as I'm concerned, penises and vaginas make people. <laughs> I, you, if I'm wrong, <laughs> tell me. I'm not saying they did or they didn't. All I'm saying is, could be. All right? The assumption on the other end was, that can't be right. Jesus never had sex. Well, you followed him around, <laughs> did you? Hmm. Okay. I didn't follow him. I don't know. But I assumed, you know, it's like during that time, uh, male Jews were supposed to be married, you know, and they ought to be in good standing in the community, uh, you know. Uh, so, and what's wrong with that? My point is there's an idea structure that's been infiltrated, has infiltrated into here that says, that's not true. Well, how the hell do you know? That's my point. I don't know. Wasn't there. Don't care. I'm not in it one way or the other. You follow what I'm saying to you? Clarity. Clarity says, I either know, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know. If you want to know, you have to find out. I don't want to know, so I could care less. I could care less who sleeps with who. I do know some strange things that every time those angels in the Bible showed up, somebody got screwed. <laughs> <laughs> somebody ended up pregnant. Here's a woman 100 years old. I forgot her name. What? <laughs> angels showed up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So what is the point? The point is, of these holy people around who, which religions are formed, what they said, what did they tell you? It's not about all that. What did they say? What did they say about what they were doing? Why they were doing it? What did they say? Not the guys around them. 
because you can come in this room and you can go around and ask almost every person in this room what I said today and you will get a different story. The idea is to help you break habits. Habits that make your life seem uncontrollable. Habits that make you not understand the nature of life. If you don't understand the nature of reality, how are you going to understand the nature of life? If you you got to have a question. You got to have a question. One of the questions for me was Mary had a virgin birth. Mm, now I got to ask the question: What did virgin mean in those days? It meant young girl. Eh, okay. What are the other possibilities? Hmm. Artificial insemination. The angel showed up. <laughs> angel showed up and said, now this is going to happen. <laughs> Who was the angel? <laughs> I want to know. <laughs> I, just, I just have a question. Because... If, in the sense of the term we know as virgin, had she become pregnant as a virgin, Jesus would have been a girl, because we're talking about another thing in terms of cell division. Okay? Jesus would have been a girl like the source, so the cell would have divided only with the female part. So Jesus would have been, hey! <laughs> Y'all come on and follow me. <laughs> Where are we going, Jesus? To the club? <laughs> I'm sorry. Were that true? I have to ask the question. Hmm. If God is true, and the law is the law, it does not violate its own self. Because the law is the self. The law is the self that you call God. God does not have love. God does not have intelligence. God is love. God is intelligence. Is it. It is a part of the fiber of its being just as part of the fiber of this is the, the fiber is this is a part of the sweater. It can't be the sweater without the fibers. So it does not violate its law. So somewhere, somewhere, somebody got something done to them. <laughs> okay. It's as simple as that. All I'm saying is we have to ask questions. Hmm. Hmm. So when I give you the basis of this information about the nature of things, all I'm saying is, think about it. Put it together. Huh. Let's go back to food. We think about it. And I said all things are light, right? When you break light down in a prism, you get various colors, correct? Then, what does that mean about the things that you see? It means that they have in them that vibrational frequency that reflects that frequency to your brain and it translates it as color. Oh. So in order for me to eat a proper diet, let me think of the spectrum of light and eat those things. The light will be full when you eat those things that the light is broken down to. 
the colors. Hmm. Makes sense. If you think about it. If you think about it. All is light. All I'm saying, I'm not saying except that what I just said, I'm saying think about it. Do your research. See it for yourself. Eat it for yourself. And watch what happens. You eat live food, your, something goes off in your brain. Light. <laughs> Light. Boy, you go, ooh, man, I sure want me one of them good old dead McDonald's. <laughs> made from many, one burger made from many cows. <laughs> I know, they're good. Mm, yum, yum, yeah. Think. I'm not saying you should or should not. Right? Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't, whatever. But all I'm saying is think about the reality of things. Think about it. All I'm trying to do is stimulate thought. If the nature of reality is like this, huh, then what about this, what about this, what about this? And as that changes, you change. One of the things is you have stress. One of the things that stress does is changes your vibrational frequency because you're tense. It's like if you've got a rubber band and it's not hold the hill with tension in its natural position. It'll vibrate like such. You stretch that band it vibrates differently. So the frequency has changed. And if it's in its natural position, it is supposed to be a liver. You stretch it to the point where it's supposed to be a heart, it's confused. It doesn't work. Something suffers. So that's stress on it. So now, how do we get rid of the stress? If you look at the law of the universe, Everything that comes in goes out. You have to accept that. You are going to die. That's the law. You're going to die. So when you stop being like this, that I'm going to die, I've got to defend, I've got to, oh, I've got to fight, I've got to, Yeah, you're going to die. Something's going to get you. <laughs> Something's going to get you. Even if it's nothing but old age, something's going to get you. You're going to die. You accept that fact. It's everywhere. Stress leaves. Vibrational frequency in your body returns to normal. You're in good shape. You're eating pretty good. You're not all uptight all the time. You feel better. Body is able to deal with it. That doesn't mean that there are not moments when you have to go, <gasps> you do. You know, you step off the curb in front of a car, you better go <gasps> and get back. <laughs> Otherwise, your day is over. <laughs> okay. There are moments when this should happen. It's just that that should not go on all the time. So if you don't deal with it, even in your sleep, in your dreams, you're having dreams that make you go like this. So all of this it's about you from the inside out. It's not about anybody, what they said to you, what they did to you. It's not about that. It's what you are doing to yourself inside. Because all things come from this way. Said it over and over again. You're sitting there right now looking in this direction at this point in time and space. What you see is not here in front of you. What you see is in your head. 
you see color. Maybe you see a blue thing, this thing. There's no such thing as color. Not out there. It's in here. This is just a vibrational frequency. The color is in here. What I look like is in here to you. What I look like to you is in there. The world is from the inside out. I don't know what I look like to you. I don't know what I look like to me. I just know I am somewhere. Where? I have no idea. Here? I guess. <laughs> is there here? Hmm. I don't know. Let's look at something. Everything vibrates. It has to vibrate in order to be. Anything that still is dead, gone. So, every cell in your body is vibrating. Everyone has a frequency. Your body as a whole is vibrating. The earth is vibrating. The trees are vibrating. The plants, the, everything is vibrating. The sun is vibrating. The whole solar system is vibrating. The whole mess, the universe is vibrating. So what you have is a soup of vibration. That's what this is. What your brain does is organize this in some fashion so that you see what you think you see. Is that what's really there? No, what, you see, what is really there is a bunch of vibration, a bunch of movement. And because of the way you see it from the inside out, it is shaped. And because of the way someone sees it from here to here, it is shaped again, reshaped inside of them. So where is the truth? You live in a soup. You are a soup. Think about it. Think about it. So uh, really, how important is all this superficial crap? Think about it. All I'm trying to do is introduce <coughs> thought. If we don't do that, if we are not thinking, I-N-G, ongoing process, then we're just having thoughts and reacting to something 30, 40, 50 years old that's been set up in that soup you call yourself, your body. So all we're doing is recalling the same incident over and over again, saying, you're doing this, you're doing this. And if the other person has a brain, they're saying, you're nuts. That has nothing to do with me. You've heard me say, when I run across people like that, I have to say, well, you know, I won't be in your presence anymore. Because what you're talking about is you. You don't need me. Because that has nothing to do with me. So rather than my sit here and try to explain to that to you, I'm going to say that has nothing to do with me. And the next time you come up with something that's like that that says that you, I say, I do. Bye. Later. We have to understand. See, when I say that, I am not going to do it. So don't ask me. Will you, hey, why don't you come home back by? Uh -uh, nope. I'm saying no. We have to understand that, too, as a part of this universe. Part of it is, there is a no. It's called death. Because <laughs> when it comes to knocking, see, I've had it standing on the steps to the front porch. 
Okay. I haven't had it open the door yet, but it's going to do that. One of the reasons why I was able to do things with the body, to change the body, is that it was out in the yard on the steps. <laughs> understand. I understand that we are going to die. I said to my cardiologist, and it kind of shocked him, I said, you know, the best thing that any of us can realize is that we're going to die. And he was, well, you're going to die, brother. I know there are people who say, well, I want to live forever. Okay. I'm going to do this and I'm going to eat like this, but the planet's going to die. And you think it's going to leave you here? <laughs> when it goes, you're going to. <laughs> it's going to die. Stars die. When stars die, they give the light, they give the life to the planet. Planet dies. It's going to die. If it is going to die, then you are going to die. When we understand that, we begin to live differently. But the understanding of that has to happen within. It can't happen from my words. A person has to be in here and go, oh man, I'm going to die. And when you really acknowledge that, you go, why am I living this facade? Why can't I live a real life? Why can't I be present in my life? Wow. Because I'm going to die. Could be tomorrow. Could be right now. Could be the next minute. I don't know. Not in some ideal way of dealing with out here. But to live truthfully and honestly with oneself inside. I'm going to die. <sighs> yeah. My doctor says, I cannot understand why a man your age would want to lift the kind of weight that you lift. Ta-da. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> you see that guy over there? He's 15 years younger than I am. Hey, what'd you say? <laughs> Ta-da. <laughs> I need to lift that amount of weight so I can lift my hand. <laughs> <laughs> I need to. Because if I didn't do that, I'd be, hey, what'd you say? <laughs> I had a great laugh the other day. This guy, 96. And his 55-year-old uh, wife just had a baby. <laughs> and he, they had another child that he had at, he was 91, and she was, I don't know, 50-something. And I can imagine, you know, sperm swimming upstream. I can imagine his with these little walkers. <laughs> 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 Telling the egg, hold on, honey. <laughs> I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, something to be said for that vegetarianism. <laughs> You're 96 years old, having babies. <laughs> well, you can wear the same diapers. <laughs> See, that's the other side of it, of accepting that thing about living and dying is that you come to a point where life has humor. It's funny. It's funny. I told a joke to a bunch of old people that they didn't like. 
And I've told it to you a couple of times, I'll tell it to you again. Two old ladies driving in the car. And she drives through the stop sign, and the other looks at it. Another stop sign right through it. Another one right through it. And she looks at it and she said, Martha, you went through three stop signs. She says, I did. I thought you was driving. <laughs> <laughs> I told that to some old people and they didn't think it was funny. <laughs> but I'm an old person. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> we learn that things are not personal. They are just what they are. When you are insecure and you haven't dealt with that insecurity through the recognition of death and that there's nothing you can do about it, then you become secure. So when you become secure, you can laugh. You can laugh at those things that supposedly affect you from the inside out. That's all. That's all it is. That's all. Change in view. Change in the way you see life. Okay. The most important thing, I have a person who called me that I haven't seen in a number of years. I just got out of the hospital with colon cancer. And called says, I know if anyone knows what to do, it would be you. Well, the first thing I had to say was, hello. Half an hour later, I'm going. And then finally she says, oh, well, thanks a lot. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> All I said was, hello. <laughs> You call for something, but it wasn't what you said you called for. You called to let me know that you had colon cancer. You didn't call, you said that you called for some advice. Okay. That's not why you call, why the person called. Okay. Didn't argue with it, don't argue with it. It's what it is. You said what you had to say. But what you said was not what you meant. When we realize we're going to die, particularly within, we say what we mean. And we say what we mean here. Simple. Life is simple. I don't need to go through all that. It's too much trouble to go through all the bullshit, to remember all the crap. No. You see, if we both understand that we are on this journey of life, I'm not going to put my trip over on you and don't you put yours over on me. Go through the journey go through the journey I can remind you well you probably should be doing this my sister call oh, not my sister call uh, my son call your sister has colon cancer okay she's in the hospital Okay. I call, and there's an inside joke between she and I. I said, hey, you bastard, you. And she said, hey, you old bastard, how are you, you know. There was something happened years ago in the family, and we started looking at each other and calling each other old bastards, you know. <laughs> uh, the 
question be, was asked. Well, did you ask about the situation? No. If you want me to know, you will tell me. You don't want me to know, you won't tell me. I'm going, hello, how are you? You okay? All right. Just letting you know I'm thinking about you. All right. Take it easy. Let me know what, how everything's going. Okay. All right. See you. What I'm saying is when you understand something, there's no need to belabor it. One of the reasons why when I'm ill, I don't care for visitors. Ananda, how are you? What the fuck is wrong with you? Did you forget how to talk? What's wrong? You're talking to me. Talk to me. I was fine until you got here. <laughs> you see, I am who I am. Illness does not change that. Now what I'm saying, from the inside out, you must be who you are. When you are who you are, it does not matter what happens, you are who you are. When you have come down to the thing that you truly are, Anything you're pretending to be falls away. It's going to happen at the moment of death anyway. And when it does, I've heard many a person say, I wish I had done. It's not going to happen for me. It's not going to happen. We scraped all of that away. I'm fine. I'm fine. It happens, it happens. You take it easy. I'll see you, or I won't. You take it easy. Oh, I, I've had, back when I was really sick, there were so many people in New York would say, don't leave us, I don't know what I'd do without you. Well, if I die, you're gonna find out. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? That shows you something about you from the inside out. It's not about me, it's about you. It's about you. My key is why don't you do your work? If you do your work, we won't be having this conversation. That doesn't mean that you won't have feelings about my demise. I hope you'll have some feeling about it. If it's nothing more than, oh well. <laughs> but it won't be this mess because of the insecurities, the doubts, and fears that fill you. That would have been cleaned up from the inside out because that's the law. Okay, yeah. We've come to that point, now we come to the next point. What would I do without you? Hopefully continue to live your life <laughs> in such a way that is beneficial to you. See, this is all it's about. It's about learning and growing. Coming in alignment with the law. Pain teaches you where you're not coming in alignment with the law. Pain. You say, oh, that's, pain is not fair. Yes, it is. That is the law. It's absolutely fair. Because we've learned something. We learned something in our mother's womb. Dependence.
we have a sick dependence. We can relate to each other and have kind of dependencies. When you have something I want and I have something you want, we can kind of work that out. But not the dependency that makes you think you're going to die. Not that sick dependency. It is for every person to stand as an individual. To stand as an individual. Without support. Now, sometimes we think, Oh, Ananda, you helped me so much. I can lean on you. And what I have to say may seem cruel. I'm saying that's not my job. My job is to help you understand you are God, and God leans on no one. It stands itself. Now, can we share something? Yes. Yes. But I cannot depend upon something outside of myself for my happiness. Remember, God is love. God is intelligence. It does not have love. It does not have intelligence. It is is love, it is intelligence, it is independence. It is that. It's not dependent. Again, don't don't take it too far. You gotta think about that. It's not. Well, I don't need anybody. It's not that. You do need somebody when you say that. It's like saying, I'm strong. No, you were weak. Because you don't have to say it. If you truly understand what the idea of strength means, you understand that there's no such thing as strength. Nobody's being strong. I'm just being myself, my real self. It takes strength to walk away from a situation that you know is not good. Other people may hurt because of it or whatever. But if you look and you know in your heart from the inside out, you suck it up and you walk and you learn. You grow. You become independent. He said, would you support me? Don't look for me to me for that support. Look to me for some guidance to help. But by the same token, when you look for me for that guidance and I give it, do it. Don't not do it. If you do it and it's not working, you say, well, wait a minute, I must be doing something off. You know, this is what I did and this is how I'm saying, well, look at this attitude that you may be holding. I'm guiding you. I don't want to hear, but so and so. I don't. Well, hell, if you knew that, what the hell do you call me for? I'm going to tell you what I see. Because I can't help you unless I tell you the truth. And I'm just looking at you. I'm not judging you. But there is no way. You see, if you think in that relationship that I judge you as a good person or a bad person, I, how in the hell can I judge you after the crap I've done in my life? How can I judge you? How can I say you're a good person? Or bad? You have no idea of how bad a person I have been. You really don't. <laughs> oh, there was a time in my life that torturing you would be just bring such glee. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> About that person. <laughs> so, all I'm saying that when you come and you see the truth, all that changes. 
because you now live differently, you are different. All I'm saying, think. I'm not going to judge you. I'll talk to you. But if you give me grief, I'm not here to take grief. I don't take it from myself. Why should I take it from you? This says all kinds of dumb shit. <laughs> says all kinds of stuff. Well, yeah, you could do so and so and so. And why don't you go over there and snatch up that 400 pounds? Because for what? <laughs> no, I don't need to hear it. I don't need to. My point is, the words are going to come and go. You have to know who you are separate from the words. They're just words. They have no power unless you give them power from the inside out. That is the law. From the inside out. Yes, Kevin? So even for you, words still go through? Sometimes. Sometimes, if I've called them, if I'm, if I'm thinking about something, like right now, I'm thinking about the relationship of vibrational frequency, color, octaves, sound. Um, I'm thinking about these things. I'm thinking about uh, bonds and valences. And, I'm thinking about these things. So, yeah. And when the words are in there and I think, oh, I watch it and I follow it. And words say, oh, that means this. And I go, oh. So now the words are there. Now, it may associate to some other thing. And I go, oh, huh. wow. It associates to some other thing, but I am still having the view from here. So when they go through, it's like, yeah, uh, I'm back here. See, this is focus, and this is what holding your attention to what you're supposed to be doing. That is the problem that we have. We can't keep our attention on what we're supposed to be doing. We. Folk, we drift because we catch hold to the idea. See, ideas, words, try to give you a, a clear view. Words are the air. Words are vibrational frequencies. They're everywhere. We, what we think is that we have thoughts, but we pick up thoughts. We are, this, we, in here, you have organs of sending and receiving. You have many different organs that you don't know that you use in the brain. So you pick up the vibration and that is translated by the brain just like the vibration is of color. Even though there's no color, the vibration is picked up and translated by the brain as color. So yeah, you're going to pick up words. The problem is you think they're your words. But when you get a broader view, you see that everybody has these words. <laughs> So they're not yours. They're just kind of floating around and you pick them up. And This is how what we call telepathy happens. It's not reading somebody else's mind. It's just, it's floating. It's there. So yes, they come through. It's just that they don't have any more meaning than I give them inside. And that's the point. Inside, we give them too much meaning. We think, oh my God, that's what I am. Well, nah. Yeah. 
That's not what you are. That's what you think. We grab, grab hold to them. That's the difference between what we're trying to get across and what happens to you afterwards and before. You grab hold. I'm this, I'm that, I'm the other. Well, no. I can say that I'm that which has, that perceives words. I'm that that perceives color. I'm that that perceives shape and form. But what is that? You can't define it. Because the moment you define it, you limit it. You limit it. So the, even the words that define it limit you. So you don't, there's no reason to deal with that. So that is why the idea is just be yourself. You can't know yourself. You can know all the thoughts and stuff they go through there, but that's not what you are. You can't know what you are. You can only be what you are. Does that all that make sense to you? Yeah. Okay, any other question about? Well, I hope today has made things as clear as mud. The idea is just to, to promote thought, to exercise. See, we can't, it's like anything. You don't use it, you lose it. You don't use the ability to question and to see and to move on. I mean, there are things that you want, you will move on about that you don't want to move on about. You want the security of that other, whatever that other is. But in order to have it, you got to let go of it. You can't be, oh, I got to have it. No, just like seeing the um, thoughts go through, you see the, the feelings of that go through as well. They go through you. They are not you. I did have one question. But they want to have the habit of lying that they're doing it. So, yes, you feel. See, that's the whole idea behind letting go and feeling, because you exist in this super vibrational frequency. Now what you do is that you feel these frequencies and these things are translated in you by certain organs. So you know what you feel. You know what you see. And the only way you know that is because you've accepted that in yourself. Now you know. But when you move past that, it's only a feeling. You see what I'm saying? It's only a feeling. I'm saying that now, I'm also going to say this because here's a error that I see all the time. Before we get to the point of clarity, oh yeah, I saw in this person and so and so, and I'm looking at you filtering stuff through craziness. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So there's a point. I always say first things first. Get clear. And then you know what you see. And you say, well, yeah, I can help you. I can help you do that. I can tell you this. Now you have to do it yourself. You have to help yourself from the inside out. Go ahead. I was going to say, I was thinking that, you know, with a stranger, the feeling is different than with a family member. Right. I don't have children. Mm -hmm. I don't have anybody. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They will be treated the same as you are treated. I see that my, those people who came out of my scrotum are nuts. <laughs> <laughs> you got that? <laughs> <laughs> Did you get that? Okay. <laughs> They're just as nuts as anybody else. I don't have that. <laughs> I, 
I don't have that kind of connection. I treat them as I treat anyone else. I hadn't heard from my son in a, in a while. I called to see if he's okay. You okay? Yeah, all right, bye. Well, wait a minute, I want to, hey, oh, okay. <laughs> I just want to know if you are, I mean, I love you. So I just check and see if you're all right. You follow what I'm saying? They can do whatever they want to do. It doesn't hurt. Doesn't do anything. Because I recognize their insanity. And I recognize that my part in that I played in helping to create that insanity. But I also recognize the part that my parents played in creating my insanity. And their theirs their parents in creating their insanity. So we all nuts. Remember, madness is being mad and not knowing it. Sanity is being insane but knowing you're insane. Knowing that that mind is insane. It is irrational. It's not a rational thing. Emotional reactions are not rational. They are irrational. Anytime you're responding to something that happened to you when you were in the first grade, and you're carrying that with you, and you're now 50 years old responding to the world as a result of that, that is absolutely insane. See, once you realize, oh, that's insane, you're no longer a victim of it. Something happens, you go, Pfft. I have time for that. So it is treating the world the same. Everyone in this world is myself. I'm crazy, they're crazy. It's cool. I just don't, it is in perspective now. And that's the idea of this thought and coming to love. I would like to thank you very much for your time. I hope this has been of some benefit to you. Enjoy. Mm -hmm.